Thank you to the organizers for letting me speak here. Um, so like the title says, I'm going to be thinking about a variant of the hotspots conjecture uh, with different boundary conditions than second Neumann. Uh, so just to set it up, I'm going to have my omega be the same as in the last talk. It's just going to be uh, a bounded Lipschitz domain in R2. Uh, and by domain, I mean it's open and connected. Um, Great. And I'm going to consider the eigenvalue problem defined by choosing a subset of the boundary uh, that's, let's just take it to be a union of subarcs. Um, so we're not going to do anything stupid, like make it just be a point or something. Um, and I'm going to consider this eigenvalue problem for the Laplacian, where I put Dirichlet conditions on D, so D stands for Dirichlet, and I'm going to put Neumann conditions on the complement, which I will call N is everything that's not doing. Um, so like was mentioned, um, in this case, there's no longer constant eigenfunction. So instead of thinking about the second one, I'm going to think about the first one. And so the general question I'm going to ask is for which pairs does the first eigenfunction, and I'm going to call the first eigenfunction u1, uh, have no interior hurdle. And omega is open, so I'll just say no critical points in omega. Um, and so the Hotspots conjecture comes from thinking about extrema of solutions to the heat equation. So it's not necessarily just about critical points, um, but basically all the work that's been done toward working on the Hotspots conjecture involves just all critical points at the same time. So I'm just going to ask about critical points. Um, so what is the motivation for this question? So I think it's a physically interesting question because so the Hotspots conjecture comes from the fact that extrema of the heat uh, solutions to a heat equation um, with Neumann boundary conditions tend toward the extrema of the second Neumann eigenfunction, assuming your initial conditions aren't strange. Um, and so correspondingly, if you look at the heat equation with these mixed boundary conditions, um, then the extrema of the solution to the heat equation will once again tend toward the extrema of U1. Um, so I think it's a physically just as interesting of a question as the hotspots conjecture, but there's also like a, a direct tie between this and the actual hotspots conjecture, um, which is what actually led me to this question last year. Um, so basically, if U2, I probably shouldn't be using U for Neumann, but I'm going to anyway. So if U2 is a second Neumann eigenfunction, so not mixed, then, like Chris said, um, the current nodal domain theorem says that if you're working on a simply connected domain, uh, along with that eigenvalue inequality, um, if you look at the zero level set of U2, it's just a simple arc joining two points on the boundary. Um, so this is the zero level set of the second Neumann eigenfunction, and it doesn't vanish anywhere else, right? So if you just restrict U2 to what I'm going to call omega plus and omega minus, um, so omega plus is where u2 is positive, uh, u minus is where u2 is negative. Then, should I go? Um, then if you take the restriction of u2 to, for example, omega plus, uh, this is a first mixed eigenfunction. Plus with the Dirichlet region equal to U2 inverse U2. Right. Because if you restrict it, well, it satisfies Neumann conditions on the boundary of what was the domain, and U2 vanishes here, so it satisfies Dirichlet conditions there. So it's a mixed eigenfunction, and it's also the first one because it doesn't change signs. So L2 orthogonality tells us that if it's a higher eigenfunction, it has to vanish somewhere. Um, so it's a first mixed eigenfunction. So basically, if you can understand the set of all pairs that have no hotspots, then that'll tell you everything about the actual hotspots conjecture. Um, and I don't claim to have done such a thing. It's, it's, I mean, it's equally as hard of a problem because they're equivalent, um, but I think it makes it worth studying along with the physical motivation. Right. Um, so, and I should say, it's also not straightforward to characterize these pairs. Like I don't even have a straightforward conjecture to state. Um, because basically you can have hotspots and you cannot have hotspots in both examples 
are easy to come up with. So uh, for example, so I guess throughout the talk, green is going to be the Dirichlet region. Um, so if you take just any domain where it's almost all Dirichlet, so N is gonna be white, D is gonna be Dirichlet, um, then basically this, the first mixed eigenfunction in this case is gonna kind of approximate the first Dirichlet eigenfunction. And the first Dirichlet eigenfunction has to have an interior extremum because it vanishes on the boundary. Um, so in this case, there's you kind of expect there to be an interior critical point. So let's get the hotspot. However, if you look at examples like uh, things that are explicitly computable, then you don't even need it to be like too terribly small to no longer have hotspots. So if you just take a rectangle and make three edges the Dirichlet region, um, then the unique extremum is on the Neumann part of the boundary. And that's not too hard to show. It's just a computation. Um, and there's no interior critical points in this case. So the general question is, how do we describe the set of domains or pairs that does this? So what results do we already have about this? Um, so there's some old results that uh, seem to have been lost to history for quite a while because I had never heard anybody talk about them until like the past year. Um, so there's a theorem, or there's a set of theorems that I will just write as one vaguely stated theorem. Uh, like von Wehlos, Ping, and Pascu from the early 2000s. So there's actually three papers talking about this in the early 2000s with different combinations of these names. So there's a Pascu paper, a von Wales ping paper, and one with all three of them that talk about the mixed problem. And two of these papers don't even like necessarily explicitly talk about it. They actually just work on the normal hotspots conjecture, but the way they're solving it is by solving the mixed problem. Um, and then the third paper, they kind of started to realize that maybe the mixed problem is actually interesting. Um, and in the paper with all three authors, they actually ask this question explicitly. So that's kind of, uh, I guess they're the first people, people to document this as a question. Um, and so I'll state kind of a theorem that they stated. Um, so if omega is convex, uh, and I'm gonna put ellipses because there's other assumptions that are te too technical to write all of them. Um, and either the Dirichlet region is a line segment or the Dirichlet region or the Neumann region is a circular arc, then U1 has no interior critical points. Um, and these ellipses are things like the describing the angle between the Dirichlet region and the Neumann region and certain eigenvalue inequalities, because it, it's like the thing Chris mentioned about like, you have to be able to reflect the domain to get a second Neumann eigenfunction from the first mixed one. Um, so it's a, little, a bit technical, but that's the general idea. Um, but after this, nobody seemed to talk about the mixed problem until literally this year. Um, so there's been five papers, five preprints posted to the archive in 2024 about the mixed problem. So the first one, um, so the first two actually have basically the same results. So the first one is my own. Um, and the other one was by Li and Yao. And their result kind of subsumes mine. There's is more general, it's about semi-linear logic problems. Um, mine is just about the first mixed problem. Um, and what, but what they both say is that if omega is a triangle, and D is either the, the union of one or two edges of the triangle. So in particular, D isn't like a subset of an edge. It has to be a whole edge or two whole edges put together. Um, then we get the same result. Then we get that U1 has no interior critical points. And we both of us get all of the same results, actually. We get more precise information about exactly where the extreme are. Um, but I don't want to write all that down. Uh, so we know exactly where the extreme are. And we also get monotonicity results in this case as well. Okay, and then more recently, uh, Roe Letter and his uh, grad student, Aldeji, I believe this was posted first in April, um, they basically generalized the idea of lip domains. So thank you for donating your time to describing lip domains. 
Um, so they basically prove that when this pair is analogous to lip domains, so it's not exactly lip domains, and by lip I mean lip one, um, then U1 has no critical points. And by analogous to lip domains, it, it like it takes them quite a while to actually like write out the definition of what they're talking about. Um, but basically it has to do with the, you can orient the domain in such a way that for all uh, X in the Dirichlet region, the uh, normal derivative at X, or not normal derivative, sorry, the, the outward normal vector to the domain at X um, is in the closure of the second quadrant of the plane. Um, and if X is in the Neumann region, then the outward derivative is in the closure of the first and third. Oh, sorry. Uh, I guess that's equivalent. Uh, yeah, these are equivalent. So I, I think they write three and two and four, but same thing. Um, and so uh, why is this analogous to lip domains? Basically, it, you can reformulate the concept of a lip domain as just being this condition, every point on the boundary satisfies this. Um, and so this is kind of analogous. So the, the it's like Neumann lip domain, basically. Um, great. And I, it's not obvious that these are equivalent to lip domains, but it is. Great. So that is their theorem. And he they basically use row letters proof or analytic proof of uh, the hotspots conjecture for lip domains. Okay, so now let me talk about the main theorem I wanted to discuss today. Are there any questions? So before I give the next theorem, I want to give a definition just to make the theorem kind of as general as possible. Um, so the definition for the pair omega d, it's a generalization of the concept of convexity. So I'm going to say it's Neumann convex. If for every point in the domain, and for, and I guess that should have said almost every because you're allowed to have corners, um, but wherever it's defined, um, so almost every y in the Neumann region, um, the dot product y minus x dot uh, the outward pointing vector at y is non negative. Um, so almost every just means wherever this vector actually exists. Um, and so it, if the domain is convex, then it doesn't matter what D is. This is satisfied. Um, so generalizes the concept of convexity. And I will get to later why I want this generalization. Um, but let me state the theorem. So this just appeared on the archive yesterday. Um, it says that if omega D is Neumann convex, if D is connected, And we have the following inequality, uh, lambda one. So this is the first mixed eigenvalue is less than or equal to the first year of the Bessel function over the diameter of the domain squared, then U1 has no critical. And for those who don't know, J zero is just the, it's the first zero of the order zero of Bessel function. So it's just an explicitly known constant. It's roughly 2.4. Um, so basically, if we satisfy this inequality and these two things hold, then we have no hotspots. So that's the theorem. Um, and I don't want to say much about the proof because I don't have much time. Uh, but I will remark that the proof of this theorem is actually not hard at all. It's like three pages. Um, and it's a modification of a result of Miyamoto. Um, so. So the proof is a modification So there's no continuity method or anything. It's just basically you work by contradiction and construct a test function that violates the um, variational formulation of the eigenvalue. Um, and it is quite simple. And 
Yeah. So I, he deserves credit because it's basically his idea and I took it and modified it for the mixed problem. So what he proved was the hotspots conjecture for certain convex domains that are sufficiently close to being a disk. Um, and so I basically replaced the part of his argument that's sufficiently close to being a disk with E satisfies this inequality. Um, and so let me state a corollary that kind of makes the result more intuitive. Um, so if omega is convex and D is connected and sufficiently small, then there's no critical points. So the, this is like the, maybe this should have been what I called the theorem. It follows from that. Um, so why does this follow from the theorem? It follows from the fact that the right-hand side of this inequality here does not depend on D, right? It only depends on the domain itself and this explicitly known constant. Um, and it's not too hard to prove that if you have a shrinking Dirichlet set, so meaning the diameter of the Dirichlet set goes to zero, then the first eigenvalue goes to zero. So eventually that inequality is going to be satisfied as long as your Dirichlet region is sufficiently small. Um, great. And I will also remark that the connectedness is strictly necessary. So that, that may seem like a random hypothesis to have, um, but it is needed. Your theorem is 2D? It, yeah, it's only in 2D. Correct. Would it work with 3D if you replace J0 by J1? I don't think so, because it uses these like th facts about the nodal sets. And in higher dimensions, nodal sets are a lot more complicated. Um, perhaps it could. I just haven't really looked into it. Um, and it's not too hard to come up with examples where the connectedness is necessary. Um, so the first example is if you allow me to have two connected components, then I can give you a critical point. Um, so if you just take a square, and the Neumann region here is just going to be the boundary of the square, and I delete two disks from the square that lie on this one of the lines of symmetry, and the two disks are symmetric with respect to the middle line of symmetry, um, and that's the Dirichlet set, then you can check this is Neumann convex because it comes from a convex domain. Um, and you have these two lines of symmetry, and since the first mixed eigenfunction is always positive away from the Dirichlet set, um, it's invariant with respect to these lines of reflection, and therefore this point in the middle has to be a critical point. So if I'm allowed to have two connected components, then you can get critical points. However, numerical, I, I don't know how to prove what kind of critical point this is. Um, and numerical results show that that's probably a saddle, so it's not actually a hotspot. But if you give me three connected components, then I can actually give you one with a hotspot. Um, and I guess I should have said, and this works no matter how small the Dirichlet region is, right? So th these disks can shrink and go toward the middle, um, so their diameter gets arbitrarily small. So if you take an equilateral triangle and drop the altitudes and pretend this is equilateral, then you just do basically the same thing. Um, so you delete these disks and take them closer and closer to the center. And once again, the eigenfunction is invariant under the symmetry group of the triangle. Um, and so the restriction of the eigenfunction to one of these smaller triangles is a first mixed eigenfunction of the smaller triangles. And it satisfies Neumann conditions on the dashed lines. Um, and a well, well, I don't know how well known it is, but a fact about Neumann eigenfunctions at a vertex is that if a Neumann function, or like if a function is Neumann near a vertex, and it doesn't vanish at that vertex, then it then that vertex is actually a local extremum of the function. And so this middle vertex is therefore a hot spot. It's not just a critical point, it's a local extremum. So I will remark that I if you're only allowed to have two, I don't know if you can get hot spots. And if the Dirichlet region has to be in like the boundary of a convex set, I don't know if connectedness is necessary. And I would be interested to know if anybody has any ideas for that because it would be cool to remove some hypotheses. Um, right, okay, so let me state. Why can't you take the Jewish layer on the boundary in the first example? Can you just punch a hole? Um, because I, so the for the corollary to work, you wanted the Dirichlet region to be shrinking in diameter. Not, uh, yeah, so I should have said. Not why it's that you argue with this. So when I said sufficiently small, I really mean in diameter. So I don't, I don't know how to make these be shrinking and keep the symmetry group. 
Why could you change just a small, small deer segments of the boundary? Right, the... but then they're too far apart. The the, the diameter of the deer region would, would be bounded would be... from below. But what, why does the argument fail? You have two two symmetries. Uh, well, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. So if you have, yeah, anything, any mixed problem with two uh, orthogonal lines of symmetry will always have that critical point. That is true. It's just not contradicting the corollary. Does that make sense? Yes. Are you assuming that omega is convex? No. No, just uh, Neumann, Neumann convex. Uh, or for the corollary, it's convex. For the theorem, it's Neumann convex, and so maybe this remark should go with the the theorem instead of the corollary. Any other questions? Okay, so I have one more corollary and one more remark to make, and then we'll be done. Um, so the corollary basically just ties this theorem back to the um, classical hotspots conjecture. So if u2 is a second Neumann eigenfunction on a convex domain, um, and so I'm keeping my omega plus omega minus notation from before, where it's just the, the nodal domains of the eigenfunction. Um, so and the second Neumann eigenvalue satisfies the inequality, but it's less than or equal to j0, divided by the diameter of a nodal domain squared. So omega plus, I could replace it with omega minus. Um, then u2 has no critical points in omega plus. So in particular, if you could prove this for both nodal domains, then you can show there's no critical points in either nodal domain. And it's also not too hard to show using the, the fact about the nodal set being a tree or a forest is that um, there's no critical points on the nodal line in the case of a simply connected domain. Um, so if you can prove this inequality for both nodal domains, then you get no hotspots for your actual domain. Um, but that's kind of hard and nebulous because who knows how to estimate sizes of nodal domains? That's a very hard problem. Um, and so let me remark, so maybe you get your hopes up that this inequality just always holds and we're done with the hotspots conjecture, but we're not. Um, so this does not always hold. And the example I'm going to draw kind of illustrates when it holds and when it doesn't intuitively. So let's just consider a rectangle of side lengths one and side length L, where L is greater than one. Um, so in this case, you can compute the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions explicitly. And the way I drew it in the plane, the first or the second Neumann eigenfunction is cosine of pi over L times X. Um, and so the second eigenvalue is pi over L squared. And in this case, since it's cosine, it's pretty easy to compute what the nodal domain is. It's half of the rectangle. And so the diameter of omega plus, let's just square it, is 1 plus L squared over 4, because that's all over 2 by 1. Um, and so if you multiply these two things and just consider a rearrangement of that inequality, is going to be one plus L squared over four, all over L squared times pi squared. And a fun fact about pi is that it's greater than J zero, right? Um, so this is greater than J zero squared, squared if L is small. And by small, I mean near one because it's greater than one. Um, so if you take L closer and closer to one, this coefficient approaches five fourths, so which is bigger than one, times pi squared, so it's bigger than j0 squared. Um, but it's less than j0 squared if L is large. Right, because this coefficient approaches a quarter when L gets large, and a quarter times pi squared is in fact smaller than j0 squared. You can put that in the calculator. Um, so what we expect is that maybe long skinny nodal domains satisfy this inequality but I don't actually have a general criterion for when this is satisfied because it's it's kind of hard to make general estimates on first mixed eigenvalues because basically just because the Dirichlet region can kind of be wherever, right? Um, so if anybody has ideas for a general criterion, I would love to hear them. I haven't found any. I found a few 
kind of too hard to state things to make them interesting, um, but nothing satisfying yet. Um, so, it, and I think it's also interesting that the intuition I have is that this holds for long skinny domains because the proof comes from a modification of the proof of Miyamoto. And what you might recall is that I said his proof applies to domains that are nearly a disk. So those are kind of short fat domains and a modification kind of gives long skinny domains and you know maybe they overlap and we get an open and closed set in the parameter space. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's all. Thank you.